I'm, I, I must ask something because I'm sure this question pops up in the head of many people and it's a question Michelle and I get asked all the time, but it's so hard. So what kept you motivating to keep doing the hard things day in and day out if it wasn't for the success that gave you the motivation? And you can pre-answer some of these questions now that you're asking that because that's actually... So Patrick, you can stay on and answer this first question for us then, because it is building resiliency, motivation to move forward, right? So this can be your question for the day. How's this? Speak about sustaining growth periods. What would be some things we can do to ensure we remain out of the mental garbage pail? I know you have a good term for that. Um, Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm a chronic pain sufferer, limiting my mobility, which limits my exercise, causes weight gain, which in turn causes more pain. I know which exercise I am able to do, but have no motivation, again, motivation, as I constantly live in the world of I can't instead of I'll try, which is really getting me down. Please, can you help? And then here's another similar one. Um, Yeah, like some days are easier than others, basically. And sometimes I get so worked up over something so little and other days I can like accept things that are even more difficult. Um, Is this common and, and what should I do to keep going? So that's kind of, since you're going to talk about that, I thought we would say these, if anybody has, is listening who asked these questions, if you want to pop on the chat and say you're here, then we'll uh, talk directly to you. But I'm sure there's other people, anybody else in the chat find that's a similar thing. Like I get it in my head. Right. And now it's like implementing dare. Everybody wants to read dare and memorize dare. And then suddenly just be like floating through the clouds. And it's like, the practice part is implementing dare. So that all kind of ties in. So can you go right ahead, Patrick? That I think those tie-ins are probably what you were going to say. So I thought that was the question. Yeah. So, so two things on that one is, um, I don't know, maybe I was in such a painful place that being where I was at, um, was only going to keep me stuck and keep me in a very unhappy place. And so the alternative to not take the risk, the alternative to not feel that intense pain, the alternative of the potential of growth um, kept me motivated to continue on. Um, and that's the reality of it. It's it's really it's really it's really a, a, a insidious type thing. And what I mean by that is, isn't it isn't it kind of really sad that the the one thing that I'm afraid to do, the one thing that I'm I'm avoiding pain from, to get to the other side is so insidious that it's keeping me stuck in my own pain that I can't think past, I have to go through pain. And this is the key factor for me, the hope I had, the trust I had. And and I will tell you this, that for me, see, I want to be around people who I want to talk to people and I want to learn from people. And I want to do what, what people who have gotten to the other side do. Um, Because they've been there and they know it. That gave me, like when I saw other members growing and getting confidence and moving on against people who I know exactly how I felt, that gave me such tremendous hope when I was not hopeful. Mm -hmm. When the pain was too much when I went out, I would come back and say, but John and Jane and George shared last week, they're moving. I, I, I had to shift from comparing to being grateful that I was being exposed to people who are getting to the other side. Comparing kept me stuck. Yep. That's the insidiousness of this, this disorder. The comparing kept me stuck. How about this? I'm never gonna get it. I'm always gonna fail at this. I'm never gonna feel comfortable. I'm never gonna do this self-fulfilling prophecy. You, you have to be courageous enough. And so this hope and this progress and doing what I just had this thought of who's ever getting to the other side of this. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And you know, you did things for the sake of doing it. Right. And that is like such a key. That's hard to get. 
you're doing something with the goal of a feel, yep. good luck. I know that's the overall goal. And everybody's like, well, what the hell we just signed up for if I'm not going to feel better? But it happens by accident. It can't be a direct goal. And I think once people get it, this makes more sense. And it's hard to, right? It's hard to explain this to somebody who doesn't, is not there yet. So it's like feeling better is a byproduct of dare. Dare is not a direct path to feel better. So the practice, like you grow confidence, doesn't mean you eliminate, you're not directly eliminating fear and then I'll feel more confident. When I'm, we're not looking for fearlessness, right? We're looking for confidence. That means trust in my body to feel fear. It took, me five, it took me five years, Michelle. Because you're a tough cookie, you're smart. And that's the problem. We got smart, tough fighters that get stuck. I mean, if five years before I started seeing some, there was progress occurring the whole time, but, but really seeing a difference. And holding on to those things, that, am I really getting better? Is it, is it really changing? And, and yet these moments of seeing differences. But I mean, everybody's journey is different. But, but I went through five years of not having a lot of fun practicing, per se. Right. But I also knew that with that practice, because of others' stories, this is going to turn eventually. Oh. And I do see progress. Right. And, and that doesn't mean that doesn't mean everybody's going to have to practice for five years. It means no. sometimes like you, you probably realize once I really started practicing like the right way, it kind of falls into place. Right. Probably like the well, beginning even, practicing I wasn't practice. I don't even judge that, Michelle. I don't even judge that. What I say is whatever it takes is whatever it takes. Good. If it's five years, two years, two days, 10 years, whatever the case may be. It's not, it, for me, I, I had to stop measuring mm -hmm. where my progress is to others. And I had to stop measuring why I'm not getting, because that's, that was setting myself up to fail a lot of times because my expectation was when it's all gone, yep. you know, that, that, and I was in a wrong space. Right. So who, I, there's 38 participants who thought, who maybe still thinks that when it's all gone, if I could just get rid of this, right? I just needed to be gone. And once it's gone, I'll be fine. So anybody in the chat, just say like, yep, yep, me, 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 or no, because that's really the key to really understanding how to use DARE. Yeah. And it's so natural, right? Because this is what we do in life. This is what we used to do. Let's fix this problem. There's a problem. I put it at the center of my universe. I fix it. And then I go back to life. But the problem is when we do that, we make anxiety relevant. We make it big. And the goal is to make anxiety irrelevant, unimportant, something that accompanies you, but it's not worth um, putting your attention onto but by doing that by putting our lives on hold and saying okay let's fix this let's fix this we do exactly the opposite and we get more of that right right this was my picture from yesterday if anybody saw it like we stop life to fight the problem so if there is a bear stop life and fight a bear we don't care about the fight right the fight is for the bear but what happens is when we treat thoughts sensations feelings the same way we're treating just I, you know, exactly what you said, except with the worst drawing version of it. <laughs> like we're stopping life to treat thoughts. I get rid of these thoughts. If I get rid of these feelings, if I can get rid of just I control these physical sensations. So like if the problem goes from this to this, this is the problem. This is what we're talking about all day. Not, oh, but all these thoughts. I have two pages, two full pages of just this kind of stuff. So um, we'll go through that in a couple minutes, but it's, and I think if I read them out loud, you'll, it'll be easy for everybody on this chat to see like, oh, it's not feels like this, but it's a thought. It's a sensation. It's a feeling. And when the goal is a feeling, you will continue to keep fighting feelings. We think until they're gone, but with anxieties until you've dropped the fight of, and, no. and the other side of it too, Michelle, which was a big aha moment for me was, and I love when the word was introduced to me. And you really intentionally have to be in this space when you, when you, when you do it. So a really just awesome thing for me was when, when the word be the hunter, be the friggin' hunter, Patrick, 
Right? So you're going out, you're going, you're going to California for two days and you have all this anticipatory anxiety, all the triggers, but I'm hunting today, man. I am hunting. As soon as I get in my car to go to the airport, I, I don't want to be a victim to this. I don't want to be a cautious observer of, is it going to come? Mm-hmm. And if it does, oh my Lord, I need to tap back into being the friggin' hunter. And I'm going to stay the hunter the whole time I'm out there. And if I'm the hunter, I have this thing about me that brings this element of strength as opposed to this being a victim and waiting and cautiously observing about how it's going and, and see I'm not ready or see it's, it's too much just yet. That's all getting me back into that stuck area. Mm-hmm. And so I have to consciously do that. And I mean that, I mean, I would just like sit there and say, you son of a, I am gonna, I'm the, you can say it. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the fucking, they hunter. all know me. <laughs> I'm the hunter, man. Today I'm the hunter. And when Randa, I- Randa McMillan just asked a question and Randa, I just want to point out. So I think just Patrick just answered your question because she said, this is what I struggle with the most. As soon as I wake up, I'm thinking about if I'm going to be anxious, how do I stop this? I try so hard. And Patrick just answered that. Mm-hmm. So don't be passive. Wait, oh, is it here? How bad is it going to get? Get up in the morning. And the first thing you should do is say, hey, anxiety, where are you? Mm-hmm. Right? You are coming with me. We are going to do this and that. And you have to come. Right. Oh, I'm, what if I feel scared? Then let's feel fucking scared. Yes. Let's go feel scared, right? We, we, our problem is we're scared of scared. You know, we think scared is dangerous and fear helps to fight danger. But when you start treating fear as danger, that's where the loop picks up. So go be scared, not go be fearless. Go just feel whatever the hell you're going to feel today. You don't know what you're going to feel in five minutes, but you know what you feel now. So that hunter mindset, you're not going to go find things that are, don't exist, but you're going to switch your attitude towards from like victim, right? The hunt did, right? Like Patrick, like you described perfectly, like looking over your shoulder. Oh, is it there? Is it there? And this way, the success of your trip is based on how I feel. Okay, Patrick, you're in the hotel. Okay, relax. Do a meditation. Listen to Barry. Do, okay, I did it. Oh, I feel good. Oh, success. Not really. That was comfort. That's great. That's nice to feel comfortable. Success is I feel scared. I feel happy. I feel whatever. And I say, yeah, 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 that's how I feel. I could feel more of those things too. And then the success is I went to the fucking hotel the freaking hotel. I went to the hotel. Check. I did what I need to check. I noticed how I felt and my, my, you know, my success is on my action. So my actions need to go towards things that I can control, not try and fight away things that are only to be noticed. And that's why I really wanted you to come on. So you can like speak from somebody who's been from the beginning till the end, and you still stick around, you pop on, you help people, you come on the dare calls you come on to dare advance i know you do a lot of peer things so really want to introduce you to everybody here and um i hope you guys found this helpful um this way it's not just coming from us all the time it's coming from people who've been through dare and saying the same thing but with slightly different twist (laughs) yeah i appreciate it michelle very much also i'll hang on to see how the meeting goes